Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders over $10 and help with the channel at the same time. Hang on to your hats, gang, because this week we have two brand new players to the channel, two brand new commanders, and a brand new gameplay. This week I am playing my Rakdos deck, and I keep a hand with Mountain, Blood Crypt, Smoldering Marsh, Spawn Sire of Ulamog, Worm Coil Engine, Demonic Tutor, and Grey Merchant of Ashfidel. Sean is playing his new Alenda the Duskrose deck, a brand new legendary creature from Rivals of Ixalan, and keeps a hand with Reliquary Tower, Obzidat's Aid, Beseech the Queen, Path of Ancestry, Godless Shrine, Unclaimed Territory, and Forsaken Sanctuary. Greg, who's new to the channel, is playing his Atarka World Render deck, and keeps a hand with Manolith, Dragon Master Outcast, Elvish Mystic, Cinder Glade, Two Mountains, and Dragon Tempest. Lastly, Mike, who's new to the channel as well, and not to be confused with Combo Mike, is playing Scarab God and keeps a hand with Commander Sphere, Heartstone, Grizzly Spectacle, Two Islands, Demir Guildgate, and unfortunately a card I can't see. Greg wins the die roll and starts us off. Greg plays a Mountain and casts Dragon Master Outcast. Sean plays a Path of Ancestry which comes into play tapped and passes. I play a tapped Smoldering Marsh and also pass turn. Mike seeing the pattern plays a Demir Guildgate and passes turn. Greg drops his second mountain for the game and casts a Dragon Tempest. Sean plays a Forsaken Sanctuary and passes. I play a mountain and cast Demonic Tutor. Just so you know, I find Thermo Alchemist and I pass my turn. Mike plays an Island and passes. Greg plays a Cinder Glade for his turn, tapping out to cast a Manolith. He then taps the Manolith to cast an Elvish Mystic and passes it to Sean. Sean pays 2 life to have Godless Shrine come into play untapped, and he casts Beseech the Queen to go into his library and find a captivating vampire and puts it into his hand. For my turn, I take 2 as well to have my Blood Crypt come into play untapped, and I then pay 3 mana to cast a Rakdos Key Rune before passing to Mike. Mike plays an Island and casts a Commander Sphere before passing to Greg. Greg plays a Mountain for his turn and pays 4 to cast a Garuk Wildspeaker. He upticks his Walker to untap 2 lands and then pays 2 mana to cast Signal the Clan. Sean takes his turn while we let Greg find his creatures, and Sean casts his foily captivating vampire before playing an equally shiny unclaimed territory naming vampire. Greg reveals his Xenagos, Thunderbreak Regent, and Udvara Hellkite. We roll to see which one he gets to keep, and the dice decide to let Greg keep Udvara Hellkite. For my turn, I play Sulphurous Springs as my land for turn, and pay 2 to cast my Thermo Alchemist before passing to Mike. Mike plays a Swamp and casts Hearthstone for his turn. Greg plays another mountain for his land for turn, and taps out, even using Garuk to untap some lands to help cast Udvara Hellkite. It gains haste upon entering the battlefield, and pings Sean for one. Moving to the beginning of his combat step, I take out the Hellkite with a hero's downfall, rather than let things get out of hand. Sean approves of this play. Sean also realizes that he missed his scry trigger from Path of Ancestry for his vampire, but we all agree it's a bit too late. Sean pays 4 mana in his main phase to cast Elenda, remembering his scry trigger when he cast the vampire. He puts out Scrubland, and moving to combat, swings a Captivating Vampire into Gruk for 2. I play an Eye of Ugin for my land for turn, and tap my Thermo Alchemist to deal 1 to everyone, but I redirect the damage from Greg to Gruk. I then cast Rakdos, taking 1 from the Sulphurous Springs, and pass turn. Mike plays Grizzly Spectacle during his first main phase to take out Rakdos, with the added benefit of milling me for 6. I hit a lot of lands, but I also hit Duplicant, Heartless Heat at Zugu, and Desolator Twin. With nothing else, Mike passes turn. I ask Greg if he gets a dragon on his upkeep, but thankfully it only occurs at 6 or more lands, but Greg does guarantee the trigger will occur next turn as he drops a mountain. Greg then casts Zer Ta Druid before passing to Sean. Sean plays a swamp and pays 2 to cast an Asylum Visitor, scrying the top card and puts it on the bottom. Sean then pays 3 to cast a Loyal Retainers, which aren't vampires, but that doesn't stop him. He swings a Lenda at me for 2 commander damage and also gains 2 life. And with nothing to do in his second main phase, Sean passes to me. I play a Spine Rock Knoll, hiding away one of the top 4 cards, none of which are good. I then cast an Endbringer, actually having the colorless mana to pay for it. Mike's turn is over quite quickly, and he plays an unclaimed territory naming zombies. He then pays to cast his commander, the Scarab God, before passing to Greg. On Greg's upkeep, Sean loses 1 life and draws a card from the Asylum Visitor's trigger, as Greg has no cards in hand. Greg then gets a 5-5 Dragon token, who enters the battlefield and gains haste, while also pinging the visitor for 1 damage, but forgets that it gets pumped by the captivating vampire by plus 1 plus 1. Greg then taps 7 mana, one of which being from the Zerta Druid, dealing 1 to his opponents. He uses this mana to cast a Tarka World Render. 
He has the Dragon Tempest trigger deal two more to the Asylum Visitor to finish it off. With the Visitor dying, Alenda gets a counter, and Atarka also gains haste upon entering. Greg then uses Garuk to untap two lands. Moving to combat, Sean threatens to punish Greg if he swings at him, so Greg decides to swing Atarka at Mike and the token at me, with both dragons gaining double strike thanks to Atarka's triggered ability whenever a dragon attacks. Mike takes 12 commander damage, and I take 10. Greg then passes turn. Sean plays a planes, and Mike wants to double check the exact worry on duplicant. Sean then casts Necromantic Summons, targeting Greg's Udvara Hellkite to borrow it for a hot minute. He then casts the Legion Landing, gaining a 1-1 white vampire token. Sean then moves to combat and swings a Lenda at Garuk and the captivating and loyal retainers at Greg for 3. Legion's Landing then flips because Sean attacked with 3 creatures and because of Danto, the first fort. With combat resolving, Sean passes to me. For my turn, I tap my Thermo Alchemist, dealing 1 to everyone. I then pay 6 to recast Rakdos and tap my Endbringer to deal 1 damage to Greg's Dragon Master Outcast. This triggers a Lenda when it dies, who gains another counter. Whoops. Mike untaps for his turn, and so does my Endbringer. He then taps out to cast River's Rebuke, bouncing all non-land permanents back to Greg's hand. Moving to combat, Mike gets some revenge on Greg by swinging the Scarab God at him for 5. At the end of Mike's turn, I ping the little retainers for 1 with Endbringer, giving Alendra another counter as it dies. Greg plays a Mountain for his turn and recasts his Manolith and Elvish Mystic. Greg then casts a Skyship Stalker and passes turn. At the end of Greg's turn, I ping Sean for 1. Sean plays a Tainted Field for his land drop, and moves to combat. He swings Alenda at Mike for 5, gaining 5. In his second main phase, he casts Obsidat's Aid to reanimate his Asylum Visitor. At the end of his turn, I ping Greg for 1. I tap my Thermal Alchemist in my first main phase, and ping the Udvara Hellkite for 1 with my Endbringer. I then swing Rakdos at Greg, who blocks with the Skyship Stalker, and Greg takes 3 commander damage. Elenda gets another counter as the dragon dies, and in my second main phase, I tap a few lands to pay for the reduced cost of Sponsire of Ulamog. I then decide to cast Toxic Deluge and pay 5 life. This kills Rakdos again sadly, but at least Sean won't get any tokens as Elenda cares about her power as she dies, and Sean has her go to the graveyard. Mike plays an island and pays 6 to cast Grave Titan and re-establishes his board state. With nothing else, he passes to Greg. Greg plays the first force of the game and recasts Dragon Tempest, followed by Tarka. I get pinged for one, and Greg asks me for my life total. I answer, and Greg doesn't seem to think that's low enough, so he swings a Tarka at me for 12 commander damage. At the end of Greg's turn, Sean uses a Danto to make a vampire token. Sean casts a Profound Journey, bringing Melinda back from his graveyard. He then plays a tapped Concealed Courtyard and passes turn. For my turn, I double check my hidden card from Spine Rock Knoll, and I cast a Grey Merchant of Asphodel in my first main phase, draining everyone for 2 and gaining 6 life. I then move to combat and swing the Spawn Sire at Greg, forcing him to sacrifice a land, and he takes 7 damage. I then pass my turn. Mike plays an island and shows me up by casting his own Grey Merchant of Asphodel, only this time his devotion is for 4. All of his opponents lose 4, and Mike gains 12 life. Mike then sacrifices the sphere to draw a card, and I suggest he swing at Sean, while Sean advocates he swing at the wide open Greg. Mike decides to just swing the Titan, gaining two more zombies and deals six damage to Greg. Greg draws for turn, and I suggest he focuses his attention towards Sean. Greg then decides to cast an Atarka's command, choosing the two modes of not letting opponents gain life this turn, and dealing three to each of his opponents. Greg then decides to swing Atarka at me, and takes me out of the game. I reveal my super sweet hidden card, Shepherd of Rot, under my Spine Rock Knoll, and Greg casts a Zerta Druid before passing to Sean. Sean gets to use Profound Journey again on his upkeep thanks to Rebound, and he brings back Captivating Vampire. Sean then draws for turn, and he casts a Beacon of Unrest to bring back the Udvara Hellkite, shuffling the beacon into his deck. Moving to combat, Sean swings Alenda and the token at Greg for 4, and Sean gains 4 life after Greg declares no blocks. Mike casts a Noxious Gear Hulk in his main phase, who targets Sean's stolen Utvara Hellkite and gains him 6 life. Elenda gets a counter when it dies, and Mike decides to move to combat, swinging 3 of his tokens at Greg. Greg chumps one of his tokens with the Zerta Druid, who dies, and gives Elenda another counter before getting taken out of the game. At the end of Mike's turn, Sean makes a Vampire token with a Danto. Sean casts a Marshall's Anthem in his first main phase, kicking it once. He gets to bring back his Asylum Visitor for the second time, and taps a Danto to create another white Vampire token. Sean then taps 5 vampires to use Captivating Vampire's ability, and steals Mike's Grave Titan permanently, also making it a vampire giant. Sean then moves to combat, swinging Alenda at Mike, who chumps with the one zombie token who hadn't attacked. Sean gains 6, and the zombie token dies giving Alenda another counter. Sean then passes turn. Mike draws for turn, and pays 2 to cast Mind Sculpt on Sean to mill him for 7. 
Mike then casts a pristine talisman and pays 3 to cast Arcane Adaptation, gaining 1 life from the talisman and naming zombies. Sean draws for turn and isn't too upset with what he finds. He taps 5 vampires to borrow Mike's Noxious Gear Hulk and pays 7 to wipe away or neuter the rest of Mike's board with an Elish Norn. This gives Alenda even more counters, and with ample damage and Mike severely hindered, Sean swings the Grave Titan and Alenda at Mike for 21 damage, 11 of it being Commander. Sean then gains 11 life and gets 2 zombie tokens before passing back to Mike. Mike hopes to hit a Cyclonic Rift, but sadly doesn't find it. To resource some of his pride, Mike decides to use his Walk the Plank to kill his traitorous Grave Titan. This gives Alenda another counter, and Mike extends his hand to concede the game to Sean. Game review time. So, I think it's pretty safe to say that Greg and I both tunnel visioned on each other pretty hard. We basically wasted a lot of our own resources, cards, and removal on each other's creatures, and pretty much left Sean and Mike alone. Atarka is definitely a threatening deck for dragons, giving them double strike is no laughing matter, and Dragon Tempest was huge, and Dragon Tempest paying for damage and giving them haste was a big, big benefit for the deck. I do think Greg suffered as he was the first deck to really establish himself on the board, and he was punished pretty much into oblivion. Greg also didn't want to be the first one to get knocked out, and as a result, with my low life total, I became a prime target for him to smash. And I should have swung Rakdos at Mike, getting in for the full 6 damage and reducing both Worm Coil Engine and the Spawn Sire by a ton of mana. This would have allowed me to use Toxic Deluge for 5 and still keep Rakdos, the Worm Coil Engine, and Spawn Sire while wiping away the rest of the board. The Worm Coil Engine could have given me some valuable life and kept me in the game for longer. Sean runs our heavy reanimate theme in his Alenda deck, as he has to let his commander die in order to get the vampire tokens. As this was our first time seeing Alenda, I think the table criminally undervalued Alenda and how many counters she gets in the game. Not to mention that lords give her more power, which in turn means that Sean gets more tokens when she dies. The deck was really cool to see, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it evolves. Mike's Scarab God deck was unfortunately a little bit slow for this game, and he didn't seem to run into any of his ramp, or really any of his token generators. He had Grave Titan going, but unfortunately Scarab God wasn't around, so he wasn't able to drain and scry as a result. It also didn't help that he was pretty much tapped out the entire time, and even if he did have the Scarab God out, he seemed to be a little pressed for mana, and probably wouldn't have been able to steal all that many creatures. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in part by support from my Patreons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit my Patreon link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.